Welcome to Tom Talks. Join me once a week right here on Tom Bully YouTube channel. We're gonna break down all the latest and greatest walleye fishing tips, walleye fishing tricks, the absolute location where these fish are right now, and all the practical, relevant information you want and need. Hooked off. And look at that, just gone. For all the information you want and need, stay tuned right here, once a week, Tom Talks. What is going on guys? Today we are back with another Tom Talks. Um, if you're new to these, basically it's where I sit down and spill a whole bunch of the information and just kind of talk about some of the recent videos we've done, um, where we've been fishing, um, a lot of specifics that just for whatever reason don't make the video, and then maybe some other stuff where we're gonna go, what we're gonna do, and a whole bunch of insider information right here on Tom Talks. That was a good little sales pitch. First of all, I wanna say thank you to everybody who bought apparel, whether that was the hooked up t-shirts for Wisconsin or Minnesota, um, or the Embrace the Suck sweatshirts. I do appreciate it. We're coming out with some more wintry attire, so make sure you guys stay tuned for that, but I hugely appreciate it. And uh, when we started doing clothing, I was like, there's no way anybody's gonna wanna support this channel by buying clothing, and then you guys did. So it's very humbling, and I very much appreciate you guys doing that. But what are we gonna talk about today? Well, I'm gonna kinda start by basically saying, um, I pretty much try to film videos every single day. Um, I might take a day off every couple of weeks maybe to, to not film a video, but pretty much every single day I get up and try to film a video. There's some weeks we get seven videos and there's some weeks we get three videos. What's the difference? Well, um, a lot of times to mix things up, we try to do like different presentations or different scenarios, different bodies of water, things like that. Obviously, we, you know, we can mix up species too, but kind of the main focus is obviously walleyes. And to be honest, I love fishing walleyes. So um, some days we get videos and we go out and we have a thing we want to film in mind and we go out and we just crush the walleyes and catch a whole bunch of fish and it goes great. There's other days where we go out and we want to film something, maybe a trolling bite, and we go out and it just doesn't happen and we don't catch the fish we want to and that's that's that. There's no video on that, right? Um, and then there's other days where we might catch a, a decent amount of fish, but it's just like not the, you know, it's like we pull up here and we catch three fish and life's good, go here, catch a fish, and then it's like, you know, a couple of hours and we just can't get on something and the bite slows, we got to switch lakes and then we end up catching them and then it's slow, you know, it's just like the flow is all messed up, right? Um, most of the videos that are good, that I think are good, when I edit them, I think are good, are normally done like in an hour or two hours, right? The flow's good, you're still all hyped up that you're catching fish. Um, you know, normally the longer and longer a video takes, um, you know, the, the we start talking to the camera less and everything's like, oh yeah, I finally got, you know, whatever. Um, and that was one of those days today. We caught some fish. Actually, we caught a decent amount of fish. It was just really spread out through a whole bunch of different things that we were doing throughout the course of the day. And that's probably on me that I should just get better at filming that stuff. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's just kind of the reality of doing these things, I guess. So um, we try to obviously get videos every day. It just doesn't always happen. So kind of keep that in mind, I guess, when you're watching the channels. It's not like we're going out every day and smoking them too. Um, this channel's probably about as real as it gets as far as actual fishing and how it is. Um, I never hide the fact that it's slow or a bite might suck or that we're only catching a few fish or, you know, whatever it is. Um, but obviously we're not going to make videos on going out for a six hour period and catching three fish on three different techniques on three different lakes, right? Um, so yeah, that's kind of that. But the best bite that I have been fishing um, all over northern Wisconsin in the past week here um, is a jig and a minnow bite and it's related to shallow water. And one of the things I wanted to talk about in this Tom Talks video is... Uh, uh, basically post turnover fishing. It's weird, very weird. Fish can be super shallow, they can be super deep, they can be somewhere in between, and they can change on the daily, who knows, right? And uh, it's one thing that I see a lot. I've, I've fished three different lakes this week. One is notorious for having a very strong weed bite. All the fish post turnover are normally up in the weeds. In fact, all the fish pre-turnover are normally up in the weeds. And uh, all spring they're normally up in the weeds, or where the weeds would be. And uh, one day you'll go out and, and it'll be good and you'll catch a bunch of fish. The next day you'll go out, you'll see a bunch of fish, you'll catch a few fish, and the next day you'll go out and there won't be any fish there. And then it'll start over. The next day there'll be a whole bunch of fish there. Um, turnover's weird like that. Fish just move a lot. And um, normally if you get on a lake that has one very good strong pattern, it's a very good pattern all post turnover. And that's kind of the truth. I mean, whether fish are, you know, you, obviously you're going to have hard days no matter what you're doing. Uh, but most of the time, if you get on a lot of fish post turnover, that's the strongest pattern that's going to be there until the lake freezes up, right? And, uh, you know, kind of back to the main story here, um, there's another lake we fished today that uh, has a very strong weed bite, and there's been fish all over it, and those fish were more finicky today. And then there's another lake that normally has a very strong deep bite, you know, and all those lakes are within 10 minutes of each other. And uh, it, it's kind of funny, you know, when you look at these, and all, all three lakes are clear lakes, 
their deep lakes and their natural lakes. Um, so it, a lot of it is kind of lake to lake, but the strongest pattern we've been fishing on all three of these lakes is a shallow water pattern. And uh, I know I kind of talked about it in the last video I did, but we've been having very strong northwest and straight west winds. Um, and that's blowing a lot of water to that, that east side of the lake and the southeast side of the lake. And the shallows in those sides have definitely been productive areas to fish. And one thing you'll see, no matter when fish are shallow, but it always seems to really affect fall fish a lot for whatever reason, um, is that shallow fish are very affected by wind. And if you get a very flat calm day when fish are relating to very shallow structure, you might have like a big weed clump here, a good gravel point here, and then sand flats in between those spots. In a good wind, a lot of times fish will clump up very tight like on those spots, right? And that's what we're seeing. We've had a lot of days of good wind. And then today was a random just flat calm day. And it was like fish were just kind of floating around those areas. There'd be a couple of fish here in the sand. There'd be a little pod here by the weeds, more in the sand than a little pod by the point, right? And that was just kind of how it was today. Um, so I, you know, as much as big wind in the fall sucks, it definitely drives a lot of those good shallow water bites. Um, it might not make a bite better. They might be biting the same amount. It just might be harder to get your bait in front of more fish. So um, whenever I can fish the windy side of a lake and or I'm, you know, experiencing slow fishing on the calm side of the lake, I always check more wind related spots. And a lot of times you'll see um, a lot better side imaging turns or you'll see a lot better um, schools of fish you know relating to something and that's really what you want you want schools of fish relating to something where they're locked into it and you know they're just going to sit there that's obviously always kind of the ideal situation so kind of back to these couple of different lakes we're fishing right and uh, the, the strong shallow water bites we're experiencing one lake is notorious for having a lot of sand with sporadic weeds it's not like a super weedy lake but where there is weed there's normally walleyes relating to it and what that's kind of like the perfect situation a lot of times because if it's very sandy and relatively void of weeds with small pockets of weeds what you have is incredibly good visibility on side imaging right you're not you're not worried about you know fish being around a whole bunch of weeds where you can't spot them or they're difficult to pick out that kind of scenario where you have a very sandy lake with small amounts of weeds is a scenario where you don't fish unless you see a, a bunch of fish, right? Because you can pretty much see every fish in that scenario. So um, I always talk about walleyes like to butt right up to the weeds or be around thick patches of weeds, but not like inside of them. That's pretty much true for the most part, most places I've ever fished. Um, but when you don't have any weeds outside of that thick stuff, you can see all those fish. So um, super easy to do and obviously like i said that's a scenario where you're just driving around you see a bunch of fish you fish for them you don't fish unless you see those fish now on the flip side there's another lake where i filmed the last couple of videos on um, that's not quite like that what you'll have for the most part there is big expansive flats of weeds and uh, they'll kind of range anywhere from six feet of water out to like 18 feet of water clear lake obviously with a deep weed line and what you're looking for there is like a couple of fish right and a lot of times, because if your whole bottom is like this grass that's like this tall with sporadic cabbage through it, you're not going to be able to pick out that school of 15, 20 fish. Most of the time what you might see is like two, three, four, five on an edge, and then you're hoping that there's more kind of in that fringe stuff, right? And that stuff's just kind of hard to pick out with side imaging. Which kind of brings me to my next point, and the thing that has been just an enormous help this week for a couple of reasons is underwater cameras. Um, I have always had underwater cameras, I've always used underwater cameras, but until I started using these smaller ones, I did not realize how much I probably should be using an underwater camera. Um, I feel like I'm plugging this thing too much lately, but this is the Markham Pursuit HD. It's actually just new for this year, uh, but I find myself using this all the time. And fall is definitely one of those times where, and I'll elaborate on this more, um, looking at a piece of structure for fish can be um, incredibly telling really versus just what you're seeing on your graph. And basically what I'm doing for walleyes, you know, I might see that cluster, like three, four fish. I'll drop this thing down, turn it on quick, super handy and small. And I'm just looking, you know, I might just, I might not see anything, right? And I'll kind of drop a waypoint a lot of times on side imaging where I see that, that little cluster of fish, drive over them and just kind of run it through an area. And what you obviously want to see is, you know, you kind of drop it down near that waypoint and you're seeing way more, you might see a couple of fish on the edge and then you might kind of drift or motor into that, into that little bit more, that little bit thicker stuff. And all of a sudden you're seeing like, oh, there's one, there's one, there's another one, there's another walleye, right? And uh, most of the time what I'll do, I'll either just drift, or if it's calm out, I'll put the troll motor down and I'll just turn it on like three. And I'll just kind of plop this thing out the back and I'll keep feeding out line until it's like, you know, a couple feet off bottom so you can kind of see what you're looking at. And that has been a great way to kind of find 
um, areas that are more productive versus just fishing for like three fish at a time, right? And we've been doing a lot of this and uh, it's definitely very telling. You know, in that, in that scenario where you're fishing like a lot of sand, not necessary because you can see them all on side imaging, right? But if you're, if you're fishing a lake that's just a lot of weeds kind of everywhere, definitely think about running something like this. Um, it's a huge tool. Now, the other thing we actually did today is we caught a whole bunch of smallmouth. We'll air some footage here. There we go. Fish on. Doesn't feel too bad. Oh yeah, he's an angry one. Come here, buddy. He's digging. Staying down. I'm assuming this is gonna be a nicer fish. I can probably just grab him. <laughs> He's, he's really going. He could be like a 17 enter that's just going nuts. You think it's big? He's getting bigger. Nice one. <laughs> yeah. Just an angry one. Choke the tube. <laughs> there we go. Beautiful smallmouth out in the cold. About an 18 incher there. Cool. Let's let him go. Hooked up. There's Sean. I just missed one. We are catching him now in the snow. Oh, oh. Doubled up. <laughs> Doubled up on the small. Not big ones here. But if you're not doing this towards the end of the season, <laughs> it's too easy and too much fun. And I wanted to set the hook a lot today. I've been doing pretty much all walleye stuff. And uh, which is cool because I like walleye fishing, but some days you just want to catch a lot of fish. And this is one of those patterns where when you get on them, you definitely can catch a lot of fish. So like I said, we were fishing one of those days today that was kind of flat calm and we were catching a few walleyes this morning and uh, we were on fish and they just were not cooperative whatsoever. So we're like, hey, no point in wasting the day. Let's go catch a whole bunch of smallmouth. So that's what we did. And uh, super fun. If you haven't small, fall smallmouth fished um, on a lot of these deep, clear, natural lakes, it's a ton of fun because fish normally group up very heavy on deep rock. And what we're doing today, we're dragging tubes uh, just super deathly slow over a lot of this deep rock. Cast out that hip bottom. You're never really trying to pick that tube up. You're just kind of twitching it through the rocks, keeping it right on bottom, balancing it. Try to make contact with every single rock down there. And uh, there might be 20 of these humps on a lake and five of them might have a lot of fish on them. And one thing pretty much stays the same. If it's cloudy out, you rarely see those fish on a graph. If it's sunny out, a lot of times those fish might elevate a little bit. You know, if you're fishing a lot of this 20 to 30 foot rock, those smallmouth, some of them might elevate and still you're, you might only see like three or four fish on a decent sized hump. But if you drop an underwater camera down and we'll throw some footage up here, these fish sit so tight to bottom in a lot of this rock, you never mark them. Um, so unless you kind of already know from experience, running that camera is a killer way to see these things down there. And a lot of times you might, you might mark zero fish or like a couple of fish on a hump. That's the size of this garage. And uh, you might drop the underwater camera down there in the rocks and there's just dozens of smallmouth laying belly to bottom down there. And most of the time they are active, especially once you fire up the school and start catching a fish or two. So um, super cool tool that I am definitely going to start using a lot more. And you guys will probably like it because that means that you guys will probably get obviously to see a lot of this footage as well. And everybody loves underwater footage. So um, yeah, that's kind of the deal, I guess. I guess that's my little... Um, what we're doing there and how I like to use that camera and uh, yeah, so hopefully you guys kind of enjoyed this video um, That's gonna kind of wrap it up I just kind of want to talk about a couple of those quick things some post turnover stuff what I'm seeing on the lakes Maybe you guys drop some comments below what you're seeing the lakes and uh, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video So I appreciate you guys watching just wanted to make this quick little video I want to keep you guys informed on what we're doing what we're seeing on the water 
and uh, in hopes that maybe it gets you out on the water this fall or helps you out in some way. But appreciate you guys watching. If you're not yet, please subscribe. We're going back walleye fishing tomorrow to a different destination where we're going to crush them on jigs tomorrow. Hopefully, fingers crossed. But uh, we're definitely going to be out there in a snowstorm. So thanks for watching. If you guys aren't yet, please subscribe. Stay tuned for more. We'll see you next time.